Well, there's a number of things. I mean, I was a, a former hospice chaplain before I worked here. Uh, in terms of our knowledge of population health, we encourage people to be as physically active as possible, which is part of what today is about. It's very important. But in terms of the spiritual side, people often ask questions they've never asked before, or sometimes they can't even articulate a question. So it's not uncommon, and it's happened to me a couple of times already this week, where somebody's got a diagnosis, they believe they're moving towards the end of life, and they're trying to work a bit more about who they are. But sometimes, it's only when we hit a crisis do we discover who we are, and, and they're the key questions. And sometimes that gets expressed in religious forms, sometimes that's just a chance to chat, sometimes people just want us to bounce ideas off. But the advantage of chaplaincy is um, you know, we're, we're only halfway in the structure, we have a freedom that other people don't have, and people can talk much more confidently, ask all sorts of really wonderful questions, and we can create time for that. I had a, a referral recently with somebody who was down as an atheist, just because they wanted to chat. We don't mind because at the end of the day, um, religion, spirituality, philosophy, psychology, all interweave about the meaning and purpose of life. And sometimes uh, finding a meaning when you've had a bad diagnosis is really, really difficult. So we will talk to absolutely anybody who wants to talk to us. I can give you a, a precise example uh, from, from yesterday. I was called out to see somebody. Uh, by our palliative care team. Uh, this person uh, didn't have cancer, it was another disease, but I'm not going to disclose any details. They're waiting towards end of life. We had a 15 minute conversation, uh, which they articulated what had been important about their life, uh, where they were now, how they felt about where they were, um, what their hopes were for what time that remained. Uh, and after we finished chatting, they just said, would you pray with me? And it was as simple as that really. And, and that kind of gave them a degree of I suppose closure, really, on what they wanted for that stage of their journey. A diagnosis of cancer is not a diagnosis of death. It's, it's, it's that, that image is changing. And today there's lots of research that says that if you have a cancer diagnosis and need treatment, if you can get yourself fit and well before you have that, as odd as that sounds, your chances of surviving the chemotherapy are greatly increased, of coming through the other side are greatly increased, and at the very least, if worse comes to worse and you have a diagnosis that will end with the end of life, you may be healthier to enjoy what life you've got left. And that's, that's incredibly important. So the whole notion of keeping yourself fit psychologically, spiritually, emotionally, and physically wraps together. And the way that you know, Macmillan are moving and other cancer organizations are moving, I think is an excellent way of saying, well, uh, health and well-being is about life to the end.